What's going on guys? Apple recently released their OS 10.9.4 update for Mavericks and this video is going to be showing you guys how to install it on your Hackintosh system. Now just a few quick disclaimers before getting into the actual update process. This is in no way shape or form a mandatory update, meaning that there's no applications that absolutely require the latest and greatest version of OS 10 at least at this point in time. Applications like Apple's Final Cut Pro 10, uh, those things, you know, given a couple weeks or so, those might require this latest version if you want to be on the latest version of the software. Uh, but little things like that aside, there's really no reason that, say for example, this is your first Hackintosh system ever and you've just spent a whole bunch of time getting maybe OS 10.9.2 or 3 up and running on your system, there's really no reason that you have to go and update right now. It's often a very good idea to give it a few days, a few weeks, and then read online to see how the performance is. A good example of this was just this most recent operating system up until now. OS 10.9.3 was a very bad OS in terms of not only the Hackintosh world, but also even on legitimate Macs. There was tons of issues all throughout, mostly relating to graphics and overall system performance. So from what I've read so far on the internet, 10.9.4 is much, much improved over 10.9.3. So this is an update that I actually recommend, but like I said, is not mandatory at all. I also want to say that there's multiple ways that you can update. You can update right through the App Store like I'm going to be doing in this video. Or you could go ahead and download the OS 10 combo update for 10.9.4 from Apple's website. There's a link to that right in the description. But nowadays with the whole Delta updates done through the App Store, things tend to work very well. And so I'm going to be doing it that way. And I recommend that you do it that way too. But hey, there's nothing wrong with a combo update. And last but not least, I'm going to be doing this update on my X58 Socket 1366 computer. Uh, you know, if you're on an Ivy Bridge, Haswell, Sandy Bridge, you know, any other type of computer, this video may not reflect the experience that you're going to have. It's very possible that you may have to branch out and do some additional research or even do a few more steps on your end to get things up and running just fine. And unfortunately, that's just the nature of every single Hackintosh video out there because every single hardware configuration is a bit different and that could lead to different kernel flags or even, you know, different bootloaders needing to be used, things like that. So with those things out of the way, let's go ahead and jump right into the Delta update. Here I have the App Store pulled up. So, you know, if, if you've never done this before, it's just like on a real Mac. Come over here to the App Store, to the Updates tab. And right here, regardless of what OS you're on, whether you're on OS 10.9 through 10.9.3, you will come up with OS 10 update combined 10.9.4. Now this update doesn't have a huge change log, just a few things like fixes an issue that prevented some Macs from automatically connecting to known Wi-Fi networks, uh, reliability from sleep, you know, things like that, Safari 7.0.5, and you know, like I said from what I've been reading, just some general performance increases with things like OpenGL. So once again, just to reiterate, this is not a mandatory update, but from what I've been reading, it is recommended, uh, especially if you're on 10.9.3. I'm actually currently back on 10.9.2 because I found 10.9.3 so terrible. Once you have everything pulled up here, just go ahead and click update. And it's going to say that you need to download and restart, which is perfectly normal. Since I'm on 10.9.2, I likely need to download a few more things that I didn't have since I don't have 10.9.3. So my update personally comes in at just under a gigabyte at 958 megabytes. And now that the update's been downloaded, we can go ahead and click restart and let the machine do its thing. After clicking the restart button, the system will take a few minutes to actually install the update and then restart. Alright, so here we are back after the update and as you can see, I've successfully updated to OS 10.9.4. Now one thing you may also notice is that I've lost audio. If this is your first time updating a Hackintosh, this is very common and it's also very easy to fix. But also examine the rest of your system. You know, come up here, go to more info, make sure that your video card is properly detected, make sure you check out your networking, make sure that's talking correctly. And I know my system pretty well, after all it's about four years old. And typically after any update, all I really have to do is reinstall my audio. So for this, I'm just gonna use MultiBeast because it makes life very easy. But if you wanna go ahead and manually install your own kernel extensions in your own way, that's fine. As long as you install your kernel extension, you're gonna be fine. So like I said, I'm gonna run MultiBeast. And now I'm simply gonna come over here to Drivers, Audio. I have a Realtek chipset. I do use a DSDT, so I'm gonna choose that. But if you're on an Ivy Bridge or a Haswell, more than likely you can go without DSDT. But like I said, I am using one. And now this part here depends solely on your motherboard's audio chipset. For example, mine is using the ALC889 audio chipset, but yours could be using maybe ALC1150 or 898 or you know any of the other ones here. So just go ahead and do a little bit of research, check out your board with your specifications, and just select the chipset that your motherboard has. I'm going to come up here to build and simply install. Of course I'm going to agree. And now for the first time ever, for the purpose of this video, my password is actually pretty secure. I'm going to go ahead and install and let MultiBeast do its thing. 
After installing that kernel extension, a quick reboot of the system yields a fully working installation, as you can see, complete with audio. So once again, I am now running OS 10.9.4, and the upgrade process for me was very simple, pretty flawless as far as the Hackintosh world gets. Now for most of the hardware out there, I would definitely imagine the process would be this simple, but there are going to be some motherboards, some processors, etc. that this won't go as smooth for, and for those, go ahead and leave a comment down below to let other people know. But even if your upgrade process went as seamless as mine did, also feel free to post down below in the comments with your hardware configurations. At the end of the day, I can personally give this update two thumbs up, I definitely recommend doing it. However, you're going to want to create a backup before you do this just in case, as you can see I actually have quite a few backups over here. But once again, I don't foresee many issues with 10.9.4. If this video helped you out, be sure to let me know by slapping that like button. I'm at CPU Kid on Twitter. Also be sure to check out RoachTechnology.com and I hope to see you guys back here very soon.